pretty good so far. <laughs> Lottie and Margaret, and we bought a van for 2,000 USD and converted it for 4,000 USD and traveled Europe with our cat Millie. We also make these ridiculous, powerful electric bikes like you've never seen before. Our base is in Czech Republic, where we made our workshop at a junkyard, renovated it from scrap material, and turned it into a full on studio. We customize and 3D print just about everything, and now we are on a new mission. Make the best possible camper van with no imagination limits and see what we end up with. And in this video, you'll see some of our workshop foster kitten. Did I mention that we love cats? <laughs> I think it will make my life much easier if I make a template of the roof right away so I can create my rails exactly with minimum amount of minimum amounts of going up and down. Are you familiar with this technique? You've probably seen it when I was doing the windows. This should be my biggest difference so that's where I drove my hole. So it's this one here and then you can just easily go and copy. Now I just want an exact location of my mounts and another one here. Yeah, is it perfect? What? It's okay technique. What? You're not coming with. Don't even try. No. No. Hey, I just want to tell you, if you don't use templates yet, you need to begin. Because that's the best thing you can do for, your, for yourself in the future. Seeing it physically in front of yourself and having parts actually in their real size is the best thing you can do. Now that Lottie has the template, he can start making the main attachments that will hold our solar lift securely to the roof. On top of the roof, we have 10 of these knobs, which are a part of the van and made for accessories like these. Lottie needs to create an attachment that's strong enough to secure the rack and hold steadily as we drive, lift, deal with the wind, potholes, all of that. We will need four of these to wrap around the top metal bits of the van. Before deciding on the material for this lift, we brought the van to the weigh station. We weighed in at 2.55 tons, giving us a little bit less than a ton to build with. We've been predicting our weight throughout this build, calculating the bikes, full diesel, water tanks, all our batteries, fridge, everything, and expect to weigh in at 3.4 ton.
I'm pretty tired, but I just want to finish this project today. It's getting late. And the last part of these mounts is welding actually not to the very end. So when I'm screwing the whole deck to the roof, I don't have to be holding a nut here from the bag. How my custom climb supposed to go? I'm gonna have a three millimeter rubber glued to the climb from the bottom. Then it sits nice on this construction part of the van. And then I have these that tighten it down. Pushes it to that rubber. And now through a block of, of um, rubber that I'm gonna have in there. I'll tie it like this, lock it to a place. That's gonna be pretty, pretty killer. Now this is nice fit in my clamping system, attaching the solar on a roof. Drilling holes next. This rubber goes first, no mechanical dragging, no scratching, no rust. Sits nice and soft and absorbs the vibration, at least some. And then we have this big anti-shock. How it goes around the detachment knob. And now I should be able to just bolt it in, if I have all the holes right. So now I don't need to hold this nut here and I can just screw it from outside in. Beautiful, look at that, how it's tightening. And it's just metal on a rubber on a metal. That is so cool. That is a nice soft joint, you know, and like you have always, you can always be pushing a little bit more and then you're just squashing the rubber. It's not like you go against the metal and then scratches through all these micro vibrations. That's amazing. I love it. It's, this is a good design. I'm proud of this. So once this is this is a, the cross tubing supporting that and uh, locking them together, that's a great support for solar panels, I think. Okay, moving to the next stage. The next attachment is the wheel run. This will act as a guide for the whole lift for the first few degrees of the tilt. Without this addition, we wouldn't be able to maintain a low profile for the lift. Lottie is custom shaping all of these attachments from metal, then welding them together.
This is so heavily customized since the original client. I cut all the sides that are supposed to be screwed to the trolley or whatever it, whatever it's on. And now look at that. See the unnecessary height right here. I need to shrink the two, so cut it, move it in there, and weld it again, <laughs> so I can have this low-profile solar panel. Because look, all of that actually matters right there. At this stage in the process, the four mounts are completed, the ramp is ready, and the wheel holders have been adjusted. On to attachment number four. The moment is finally here. Attachment of the actuator. Pretty crucial well needs to be good. Starts looking like a pretty nice transformer's mount. Nice and hot. Honey, you're getting really good at welding. I still need to be sending. So for the first time, soon enough, we'll be able to test it on a metal hardware and see what is the weak point. Because then we need to make it stronger and keep testing up until it's a stable system. And now, on with the show. Next, Lottie will add a small support for the actuator, and because of this design, this same support will also act as the pin for the lock that will hold the structure in place when we drive. Without this small support, the handle for the actuator itself would be prone to bend. I'm using the minimum amount of material. This is five millimeter doubled to 10 because that's our actuator mount. And then you can see this extra support. That's essential. That needs to transfer all the pressure as much as it can all over this thing. If there is a weak point, I'll find you and I'll kill you. It was from a movie taken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll find you. And then I'll kill you. 
Liam. And your kids. And your mom. <laughs> Three and a half kilos. What? That's not even that. That's nothing. Nothing. No. No way aluminum. No way. <laughs> <laughs> this is too tricky for just bolted aluminum. This needs to be welded like this. Heavy duty. Or, never mind. Somebody will definitely do it out of uh, aluminum. And I'm happy for you. I wish to be able to do it too. Yes, I think two millimeter will be better than one millimeter. I have all these different samples, so I'm testing out how it feels. And I'm preventing having metal on metal when closing and opening. It's gonna always sit. Just in case we have some vibrations when driving. This would be better than scratching all the pain and eventually start rusting. Plus this sound. Yeah, that's gonna be good. Two millimeter, two millimeter stick. It's gonna, so I'm gonna mammoth glue it after I spray paint it. That's great. This is easily one of the toughest parts of the of the of the solar rack. This because that's tricky. I'm thinking this is this needs to be a mechanism that is capable of sliding 16 mil. At the same time, it needs to be able to rotate. And at the same time, it, nothing can be in its way right here. See? Nothing below this level can be happening because essentially it goes like this. So I'm thinking routering out groove here, eight millimeters, and then having one pin axle here and here that would go like this. And then inside of this, I would make silen sliding part and just screw to it. That I think would support it and could actually do the job. Tohle jsem maximálně zvědavý, jestli bude fungovat. To by bylo dobrý. like a corn dog this is like multiple corn dogs and it's not different roughnesses of the sandpaper because this needs to be properly polished you have that nice and sliding motion so already it should be a little bit smoother but this was only 80 roughness of the sandpaper. <laughs> yeah, that is really smooth. That's gonna work out. It's gonna work out. I can even feel how, how it gets smoother, how I'm shaping it, you know. Now blow, and again a little bit finer. That's gonna be so good. Yeah. See? <laughs> this is this is very smooth.
adding a tiltable solar rack to our van was a non-negotiable due to our own power demands. We have four solar panels, each supplying 250 watts, giving us a theoretical one kilowatt for the roof. Without a tilt, we'd only be able to absorb maximum power at peak daylight, but with this contraption, we'll be able to milk the sun from sunup to sundown. This was a really, really good new experience. I essentially took a strong, powerful soldering iron and I heated up the nut and I pushed it in and angled it beautifully. And I have them both from both sides. It's nicely, essentially glued in. That's a great sliding mechanism now. I've been thinking about these details non-stop. It's really challenging. And when I have something like that, I just keep thinking about it non-stop, visualizing it in a bed when falling asleep and executing it straight the following morning. Wow. Wow. <laughs> now I can cut it exactly on length and that should uh, work as a great pivot for me. <laughs> This is a few of my products I just made. First product, a slider with a thread. That goes in here.
really beautiful sliding mechanism. A to B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Then uh, this is my sliding mechanism and it's gonna work together with the rotating mechanism to change the angle. So this is my super product. <laughs> thread. I essentially made a thread on a, on a bolt that goes in there. So now I can throw it in. Weld another holder, pack it to attach to the van and then I have my rotating motion. And very soon, very soon I'll be able to test out for the first time this sliding mechanism together with the wheel. Wow, well, I have two options, hammer it in or just bend it a millimeter. Moment of truth, what happens on a 45 degree angle? Nothing. <laughs> no collision, that means green card to the land of the tilt. Yes! It's a low profile. Just feel to know, and I'm going to say that I'm going to do normally in a shabon, say it's not quid, man. A celou dobu víš, na čem děláš, no? Two millimeters gaps everywhere, so if the activator holds like this, I still have, I still have five millimeters there, so all the water running down doesn't get trapped in a really small gap. This rack needs to be able to lock itself into place. Neither Lottie or I want to have to be thinking about locking the roof rack when we're changing locations, and we also don't want to have to do anything manually so high up in the air. This lock will look a little bit differently than it does in this design, but will hold everything in place steadily as we drive. Something really terrible happened here. This just misses a mounted actuator. Now we have a fully uh, sliding liftable system with a lock at the end to prevent, <laughs> to prevent any vibration when driving. Look, no this is gonna be sitting exactly on a rubber and it's gonna tight it in. With this last piece of a motion of an actuator, like it pushes and closes. And once the rubber is under, mm -hmm. will there be rubber under the lock? Too? Nice and locked. No, this is gonna be metal on metal. That's such a minimum that mm -hmm. if it starts rusting, it's fine because it would probably rust through in 20 years. <laughs> Bye. I'm I'm very. <laughs> Bye. 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 One of the final attachments is for the top of the actuator and the lift structure. This is what the actuator will be pushing against to tilt our four solar panels. Therefore, it needs to be strong enough to support all the weight.
crossed. That looks very scary. That looks very scary seeing the weight on it. So this should be the equivalent of the solars and uh, all the metal we have on the top of it. Now you should realize that this is no flimsy mechanism, that we are not doing just one solar. We are actually doing four 15 kilo solar panels. It's a lot of weight, 70 kilos. So now this is a heavy duty and this is why we have a really strong actuators. So I'm expecting from, from my testing, I'm expecting this will be a weak point because it's only welded at the bottom and from the beginning I knew I'll have to probably weld a little triangle here to tighten it more together and give it a better support. Because now all the, wheel, all the weight is essentially held on these wheels. They should carry 40 kilos each, so that shouldn't be a problem if it has a good support. This project's been in my head for past few months and like a last week I finally feel, felt like I sorted the mechanism out. And after that whole time, this is finally the phase of loading and testing it with that actually weight we're gonna be carrying. That's a big moment for me. All of this work is now in this switch. This is definitely a weak point here. I need to give it a little bit of support. That's one tweak I need to do. And let's get, let's let it lift the weight. Not much from here. Looks pretty good so far. Now the actuator is gonna take over. And and and. What? Yeah! Yo! <laughs> Yo! Oh Yo! my gosh! Look at that go! I'm not going all the way down. I don't want that concrete to slide down. <laughs> but now it carries less and less weight as it goes down because that works as a lever. So this is the critical point that we pass the wheel. Oh my god. We pass the wheel. Wow, I'm still I can't believe this is gonna work. And then coming down, okay, coming down. Nice. Okay. That so that nice. comes down and then the lock here. In <laughs> <laughs> one motion. Ladies and gentlemen, Lottie's got the prize. Yes! <laughs> it's gotta be against the law to look this damn good. Cause baby, I feel real good and I wish I would. It's gotta be.
Scene zero zero one. A kitten, you can be messing up my shots. Scene zero zero two. Thank you. Baby, watch out now.